raised over the last century as icons of engineering. And for the taming of mighty rivers for hydropower facilities and water supplies. Engineers have radically changed the Inland Empire. Here in the United States, increasing numbers of dams are reaching end-of-life status, no longer fit for purpose, too expensive or too dangerous to operate. Of course, many monuments from that era still stand as viable, important sources of water, like this dam, founded more than a century ago outside San Francisco. But there are thousands more across the country that are crumbling or obsolete. According to a study published in July 2025, there are more than half a million dams across the US. With an average age of 64 years, 70% of them have exceeded their designed lifespans and well over 16,000 are deemed a high hazard risk to people downstream. People think of them in this sense of permanence, but it's just a piece of infrastructure. Infrastructure ages, infrastructure fails. According to one UN estimate, refurbishing America's aging dams could cost at least $64 billion. But removing them can also be costly and complicated, and the number of decommissions is rising. We really see a lot of acceleration right up through last year where over a hundred dams were removed throughout the country. Among the removals completed in 2024 was this record-breaking demolition of four hydroelectric dams across the Klamath River near the California-Oregon state border. This was the former location of Iron Gate Dam, one of four dams removed as part of the world's largest dam removal and river restoration project. As alternative energy sources became cheaper and more efficient, the importance of hydropower facilities completed in the 1960s faded. These were four large dams that produced a small amount of electricity. They were only about 2% of that power portfolio, but they produced dirty water, what dams do is they basically block the flow in a living body. So as water sat stagnating in the reservoirs behind the dams, it heated up. This unnatural temperature regime downstream affected things like fish migration, but also algae blooms. What really spurred on the advocacy to remove these four dams was the largest fish kill in United States history in 2002 that killed 60 to 70,000 adult run Chinook salmon Several local American Indian tribes led a decades-long campaign to remove the dams, revive the river and its salmon, central to ceremony and culture. Animals and fish and people are the same. <laughs> They're our ancestors, that's how we believe. The river was also sustenance, right? We were fishing people, we were hunting people, and so everything about us is tied to the river. That ancient reverence is well-founded. Reintroducing salmon populations to reopen parts of the river could determine the success of the wider regeneration project. The salmon's life history capitalizes on stealing ocean-derived nutrients and having migrating fish come upstream and then die and fertilizing the entire ecosystem. And so their presence on the landscape is incredibly important. Restoring parts of the Klamath once blocked by dams is expected to cost at least $450 million. But a full recovery could take decades, and support is not universal. Some landowners are angry at the loss of access to now vanished lakes. And around 500 kilometers southwest, just above the famous Californian wine county of Sonoma, another proposed dam removal has divided opinion and communities. There are literally people that can't understand how you could possibly remove a dam, and there are others that can't understand how you could possibly leave that dam in place. The operator of two aging, uneconomical hydroelectric dams wants them decommissioned. Conservation and outdoor groups claim that removing them would create the state's longest free-flowing river for endangered fish. But the Potter Valley Project dams also feed lakes and a river system that have provided water to growers and towns across two counties since the early 1900s, 
in a region susceptible to severe drought and wildfires. I've been in the fire service for 32 years and I've been to every mega fire that we've had um, throughout California. And at every one of these fires, they have a commonality. We run out of water. And we're talking about going back a century without a solid plan and a proven method to provide for security and safety of Californians. But the body responsible for building and operating an alternative water supply system once the dams come down claims its proposed tunnel diversion facility will be a feasible replacement. We can still take that water safely so it can be released to some 600,000 people dependent on this water supply. It's difficult work, but in the end, if all the interests are honest, there is common ground that can be found. That common ground comes with higher water bills for users who will have to pay for the construction and upkeep of the new diversion facility. But many are still concerned that supply won't match demand. Before the dam comes out, we need to make sure that we have reliable water source for our future. If the decision is to remove these dams, we have to be prepared to find a way to store water that currently we're not storing for our use in the summertime. It's an ongoing process, one of many across the US and abroad, dealing with the growing end of life dam dilemma. Finding viable ways to remove or rebuild them without damaging the environment or impacting water supplies could well require the same level of imagination, investment and engineering drive which raised the iconic superstructures of the Great Dam era. Mm -hmm.